Suspense. And the producer of radio's outstanding theater of thrills, the master of mystery and adventure, William N. Robeson. Radio drama is an art form which developed slowly during the quarter century between the perfecting of the audio tube of Dr. Lee DeForest and the video tube of Dr. Vladimir Zwyorkin. We feel that great radio plays, just as great stage plays, should be revived from time to time. So, we are presenting a revival of one of the most famous radio plays of all time, Lucille Fletcher's unforgettable Sorry Wrong Number. And of course, there is only one actress in the world entitled to play the leading role of the harassed Mrs. Stevenson. She who created the role 14 years ago, Miss Agnes Moorhead. Listen. Listen then to Sorry Wrong Number, which begins in exactly one minute. We have, together, ample capacity in freedom to defend freedom. This is NATO, the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. Day after day, month after month, since April 4th, 1949, the activities of the North Atlantic Treaty Organization have moved steadily forward on many fronts. This complete cooperation must and will continue because the concept of national self-sufficiency is out of date. Countries of the free world are interdependent, and only in genuine partnership, and by combining their resources, sharing tasks in many fields, can progress and safety be found. The United States of America is a part of NATO. You should be aware of, and alert to, the objectives and programs of the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. And now... Sorry, Wrong Number, starring Miss Agnes Moorhead. A tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. Operator? Operator, I've been dialing Murray Hill 40599. Now, for the last three quarters of an hour, and the line is always busy, I don't see how it could be busy that long. Will you try it for me, please? I will be glad to try that number for you. One moment, please. You see, it's my husband's office. He's working late tonight, and I'm all alone here in the house. My health is very poor, and I've been feeling so nervous all I day. I am ringing Murray Hill 40599. Hello? 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 Is Mr. Stevenson there? Hello? 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 Hello, George? Yes, boss, this is George speaking. Hello, who's this? What number is this, please? I'm here with our client. Oh, good. Is everything set up for tonight? Well, yes, George, he says everything is set up. Good. What number is this, please? Where are you now? In a phone booth. Don't worry, everything is okay in my department. Very well. You got the address? Sure, I got it all cased. At 11 o'clock, the private patrolman goes around to a bar on 2nd Avenue for a what? beer. Yes. At 11.15, a train crosses the bridge makes a noise in case her window is open and she should scream. Uh, hello? Remember, George, make it quick. Our client doesn't wish her to suffer long. Oh. I'll use a knife then. Yes, a knife will do very well. And remember afterwards, remove her rings and bracelets and the jewelry in the bureau drawer. Our client wishes it to look like simple robbery. I know, I know. Don't worry. I never muff a job like this. Everything's okay. I never... Oh, how awful. How unspeakably awful. Never... Operator? Operator, I've just been cut off. I'm sorry, what number were you calling? Why, well, it was supposed to be Murray Hill 40599, but it wasn't some wires must have got crossed, and I was cut into a wrong number, and I, I've just heard the most dreadful thing, something about a murder. And, Operator, you'll simply have to trace that call at once. What was the number? Well, I don't know, it was a wrong number, and these two men, they were cold-blooded fiends. And they were going to murder somebody. Some poor, innocent woman who was all alone in a house near a bridge. Uh, we've got to stop them. We've what just got to... What were you calling? Well, that doesn't matter. It was a wrong number. Now, look, it was obviously a case of some little slip of the finger. I asked you to get me Murray Hill 40599 who dialed it, but your finger must have slipped. And I was connected with some other number. I, I could hear them, but they couldn't hear me. Now, I simply fail to see why you couldn't make that same mistake again on purpose, why you couldn't try to dial Murray Hill 40599 in the same sort of careless way. Murray Hill 40599, I will try to get it for you. Well, thank you. Oh, dear. I'm 
sorry. Murray Hill 40599 is busy. Uh, but, Operator... Yes, ma'am? You didn't try to get that wrong number at all. I asked you explicitly, and all you did was dial correctly. I'm sorry. I will connect you with the supervisor. Well, please... This is the supervisor. May I help you? Uh, yes, I, I want you to trace a call, a telephone call immediately. I don't know where it came from or who was making it, but it's absolutely necessary that it be traced because it was about a murder that someone's planning. A, a terrible, cold-blooded murder of a poor, innocent woman tonight at 11.15. I see. Well, can you trace it for me? Can you track down those men? I'm not certain. I can try. May I have your name, please? Uh, Mrs. Stevenson, Mrs. Albert Stevenson. But, but listen, And I, your telephone number, please? Oh, Plaza 37599. But if you go on wasting all this why time... Why do you want this call traced, please? Why? Well, I told you why. These men sounded like killers. They're dangerous. They're going to murder this woman at 11.15 tonight, and I thought the police ought to know. Have you reported this to the police? Well, no, not yet. You want this call checked purely as a private individual? Well, yes, but meanwhile... I'm sorry, you... Mrs. Stevenson, but I'm afraid we couldn't trace the call just on your say-so as a private individual. Oh. We'd have to have something more official. Oh, for heaven's sake. Well, all right, I'll call the police. Thank you. I'm sure that would be the best way to get home. Oh. Ridiculous. <laughs> The second act of Suspense continues in one minute. Another visit with Joe and Daphne Forsythe. Hey, honey, I'm home. Daphne. Drop dead. Uh-oh, what's the matter, honey? Don't you speak to me, you, you Don Juan. Don Juan? Daphne, I'm no Don Juan. No hobble espanol. Very funny. Ha, ha, ha. Well, it was no prize winner, but... You know, Neither are you, you you Lothario. I've often wondered, what's a Lothario? I don't know, but that's what the wives on TV always call their husbands. I guess it applies. Do you want me to go out and come in again? As far as I'm concerned, you can go for a long walk, preferably on a short pier. Well, oh, come on, Daphne, what's wrong? Your good friend Harry called, and he spilled the beans. Which beans? He said, quote... Tell Joe he was right about those blondes. They're great. Unquote. Blondes? That's what he said. <laughs> well? He didn't say blondes. He said bonds. Savings bonds. What? Sure. I buy them on the payroll savings plan. And I told Harry he ought to do it too. Savings bonds have a guaranteed interest that pays back $4 for every three, which is a pretty good investment. That's a pretty good story, too. It's true, so help me. That's why Harry's so happy. Savings bonds are great. Well, maybe you're right. You wouldn't really fool around with blondes, would you? You're too faithful and sweet and kind and... Fast talking. And now... We continue with Act Two of... Sorry, Wrong Number, starring Miss Agnes Moorhead. A tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. Operator? The police department. Get me the police department, please. Thank you. I will connect you with the police department. Oh, dear. You have to dial. Can't you ring them directly? Police Station, Precinct 43, Sergeant P Martin speaking. Police Department? Oh, uh, uh, this is Mrs. Stevenson. Mrs. Albert Smythe Stevenson of 53 North Sutton Place. I'm calling up to report a murder. I, I mean, the, the murder hasn't been committed yet, but I just... I overheard plans for it over the telephone, over a wrong number that the operator gave me. Yes, ma'am. It was a perfectly definite murder. I heard their plans distinctly. Uh, two men were talking, and they were going to murder some woman at 11.15 tonight. Uh, she lived in a house near a bridge. Are you listening to me? Yes, ma'am. And there was a private patrolman on the street. He was going to go around for a beer on 2nd Avenue. And uh, there was some third man, a client, who was paying to have this poor woman murdered. They were going to take her rings and bracelets and use a knife. Uh, well, it's, it's just unnerved me dreadfully, and I'm not well. I see, and uh, when was all this, ma'am? About eight minutes ago. And what was that number you were calling? Murray Hill 40599. But that wasn't the number I overheard. I mean, Murray Hill 40599 is my husband's office. He's working late tonight, and I was trying to reach him to ask him to come home. 
I'm an invalid, you know, and it's the maid's night off, and I hate to be alone, even though he says I'm perfectly safe as long as I have the telephone right beside my bed. Well, we'll look into it, Mrs. Stevenson, see if we can check it with the telephone company. Check, check it! I've already taken care of that. Oh, you have? Yes, and personally, I feel you ought to do something far more immediate and drastic than just check the call. I'd say the whole thing calls for a search. A complete and thorough search of the whole city. I'm very near the bridge, and I'm not far from 2nd Avenue, and I know I'd feel a whole lot better if you sent around a radio car to this neighborhood at once. And what makes you think the murder's gonna be committed in your neighborhood, ma'am? Well, I... Well, I don't know. Only the coincidence is so horrible. Uh, 2nd Avenue, the patrolman, the bridge... Look, lady, why don't you look at it this way? Supposing you hadn't broken in on that telephone call. Supposing you'd got your husband the way you always do. You wouldn't be so upset, would you? Well... I suppose not, only it sounded so inhuman, so cold-blooded. Unless, of course, you have some reason for thinking that someone may be planning to murder you. Me? Oh, no, no, I hardly think so. I I, I mean, why should anybody? I'm alone all day and night. I, I see nobody except my maid, Eloise. She's a big girl. She weighs 200 pounds. She's too lazy to bring up my breakfast tray. And the only other person is my husband, Albert. He's just crazy about me, just adores me. Waits on me hand and foot. Has scarcely left my side since I took sick 12 years ago. Well, then there's nothing for you to worry about. Now, if you'll just leave the rest of this to us, we'll take care of it. But what will you do? It's so late. It's nearly 11 now. We'll take care of it, lady. Well, will you broadcast it all over the city and send out squads and warn your radio cars to watch out, especially in suspicious neighborhoods like mine? Look, lady, I said we'd take care of it. Just now, I've got a couple of drunks here that require my immediate attention. Good night, ma'am, and thank you. Oh, you, you... Idiot! Oh. Now, why did I hang up the phone like that? Now he'll think I am a fool. Oh, why doesn't Elbert come home? Why doesn't he? Get the operator again. Operator? Operator, for heaven's sake, will you ring that Murray Hill 40599 number again? I can't think what's keeping him so long. I will try it for you. Try. I'm sorry, Murray Hill 40599 is busy. I can hear it. You don't have to tell me. I know it's busy. Oh, if I could only get out of this bed for a little while. If I could just get a breath of fresh air or just lean out of the window and see the street. Oh. Hello? Albert? Hello? 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 Oh, what's the matter with this phone? Hello? Hello? What in the world? Hello? Oh, for heaven's sake, who is this? Hello? 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 <laughs> what in the world? What are they trying to do to me anyway? Operator? Hello, operator. I don't know what's the matter with this telephone tonight, but it's positively driving me crazy. I've never seen such inefficient, miserable service. Now, look, I'm an invalid, and I'm very nervous, and I'm not supposed to be annoyed. But if this keeps on much longer... What seems to be the trouble, please? Well, everything's wrong. I haven't had one bit of satisfaction out of one call I've made this evening. The whole world could be murdered for all you people care, and now my phone keeps ringing and ringing and ringing and ringing every five seconds, and when I pick it up, there's no one there. I'm sorry. If you will hang up, I will test it for you. I don't want you to test it for me. I want you to put that call through, whoever it is, at once. I'm afraid I can't do that. You can't? Oh, you can't. And why? Why, may I ask? The dial system is automatic. Automatic? And meanwhile, I've got to sit here in my bed suffering every time that phone rings, imagining everything. I will try to check the trouble for you. Oh, for heaven's sake, I'm going to run out of my mind. Hello! Hello, stop ringing me. Do you hear? Answer me. Who is this? Do you realize you're driving me crazy? Who's calling me? What are you doing it for? Now stop it! Stop it! Stop it! I say, hello! If you don't stop ringing me, I'm going to call the police. You hear? The police! I... Oh, oh if, if Albert would only come home. Oh, let it ring. Go on, go on, ring. This trick of some kind. I won't answer that one. Go on, ring, ring, ring. Ring. <laughs> Can an act of heroism be symbolized? It can, and is, in one of its most distinguished forms, by a medallion of gold bronze bearing the great seal of the United States, surrounded by a blue enameled band inscribed, For Distinguished Service. 
On the reverse side is a group of flags representing the Allied nations. The medallion is suspended from a plain bar attached to a ribbon with vertical stripes of red, white, and blue. This is the Army's Distinguished Service Medal, awarded to military personnel for exceptionally meritorious service to the government in a duty of great responsibility. This medal also has been awarded to military personnel of other countries, notably the leaders of the Allied troops in World War I, General Patin of France, Field Marshal Haig of Great Britain, and Lieutenant General Diaz of Italy. In nature and background, the Distinguished Service Medal is somewhat similar to the Legion of Honor bestowed by France. Only a few are worthy. Only a few can measure up to this symbol of selfless dedication, a vital and living form of freedom. And now, we continue with Act Three of Sorry, Wrong Number, starring Miss Agnes Moorhead. A tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. Stop it! Stop it! Stop it! I can't stand anymore! Stop it! Hello! What do you want? Stop ringing, will you? Stop it! Just stop! Uh, hello, is this Plaza 37599? Oh, yes. Yes, I'm sorry, this is Plaza 37599. This is Western Union. I have a telegram here for Mrs. Albert Stevenson. Oh, well... I'm Mrs. Stevenson. The telegram is as follows. Darling, terribly sorry. Tried to get you for last hour, but line busy. Oh. Leaving for Boston 11 p.m. tonight on urgent business. Oh, no. Back tomorrow afternoon. <laughs> Keep happy. Love, signed Albert. Oh, oh, no. Do you wish us to deliver a copy of the message? No. No, no thank you. Thank you, madam. Good night. <laughs> Good night. Oh, no. <laughs> I don't believe it. He couldn't do it. Not when he knows I'll be all alone. It's some trick, some fiendish trick. <laughs> Operator. Operator, try that Murray Hill 40599 number for me just once more, please. You may dial that number direct. Oh, I can't do it. No one will do anything for me. <sighs> How could you? How could you? <laughs> I can't be alone tonight. I just, I just can't. If I'm alone one more second, I'll go mad. I, I don't care what he says or, or, or what the expense is. I'm a sick woman. I'm entitled to a little consideration. <laughs> Information. Information. I, I want the telephone number of, of Henchley Hospital. Henchley Hospital? Do you have the street address? Uh, no, no, but it's somewhere in the 70s. It's a very small, private, and exclusive hospital where I had my appendix out two years ago. Henchley, H E N C. One moment, please. Uh, well, please hurry, and please, what is the time? You may find out the time by dialing Meridian oh. 71212. Oh, for heaven's sake, I've no time to be dialing. The Henchley Hospital is Butterfield 8, Butterfield 2598. Oh. oh, Butterfield 8, 2, 5, 9, 8. Henchley Hospital, good evening. A uh, uh, nurse's registry, please. Who was it you wished to speak to, please? I want the nurse's registry at once. I want a trained nurse. I want to hire her immediately for the night. I see. And what is the nature of the case, madam? Nerves! I'm very nervous. I need soothing and companionship. You see, my, my husband is away. Have you been recommended and I... to us by any doctor in particular, madam? No. And our superintendent has asked us to send people out only in those cases where the physician in charge feels it is absolutely necessary. Well, it is absolutely necessary. I'm, I'm a sick woman. I'm, I'm, I'm very upset. I'm alone in this house, and I'm an invalid, and, and tonight I overheard a telephone conversation that upset me dreadfully. In fact, if someone doesn't come at once, I'm afraid I'll go out of my mind. I see. Well, I'll speak to Miss Phillips Miss as Phil soon as she comes in. Miss Phillips? 
And what is your name, madam? When do you expect her in? Well, I really couldn't say. She went out to supper at 11 o'clock. 11 o'clock? But it's not 11 yet. Where's my clock? Oh, my clock has stopped. Oh, what time is it? Just 15 minutes past 11. Oh, what was that? What was what, madam? That, that click just now in my own telephone. As though someone has lifted the receiver off the hook of the extension phone downstairs. I didn't hear it, madam. Now about... But I kitchen. did! There's someone in this house. Someone downstairs in the kitchen and they're, they're listening to me now. They're... I won't pick it up. I won't let them hear me. I'll be quiet and then they'll think. But if I don't call someone now, while they're still down there, there'll be no time. I've got to get the operator. 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 I'm uh, I'm in desperate trouble. I'm sorry, I cannot hear you. Please speak louder. I don't I don't dare. There's someone listening. Can you hear me now? I'm sorry. But you've got to hear me. Oh, please, you've got to help me. There's, there's someone in this house. Someone who's going to murder me, and you've got to get in touch with the There it is. Did you hear it? He's he's put it down. He's put down the extension phone. He's he's coming up. He, He's, he's coming up the stairs. Oh, give me the police department. Give me the police department. One moment, please. I will oh, connect please. you. Please. Get the police. Oh, Mr. Barry. Get the police, please. Oh, my God. I... What? What do you want? Oh, don't. Don't come near me. Please, I haven't heard anybody. Please, I haven't. Please don't hurt me. Please. I haven't heard anything. Ah! Police department? Sorry, wrong number. Don't worry, everything is okay here. Suspense. In which Miss Agnes Moorhead starred in William N. Robeson's production of Sorry, Wrong Number. Written by Lucille Fletcher. Supporting Miss Moorhead in Sorry, Wrong Number were Jeanette Nolan, Virginia Gregg, Ellen Morgan, Joe DeSantis, Byron Kane, and Norm Alden. Listen. Listen again next week when we return with The Country of the Blind by H.G. Wells. Another tale well calculated to keep you in... Suspense. Suspense has been brought to you through the worldwide facilities of the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service.